This is a Caribbean spiny lobster, and it's one of the most expensive and sought after forms of seafood. These lobster are not only hunted down by humans, but one of the ocean's most voracious and fierce predators. Thousands of these Kubera snapper will spawn off of Florida's coast during the late summer full moons. And if you haven't guessed by now, their favorite bait is a live Florida lobster. No way, he ate it on top, huh? Going on guys, Victor here, and today I am super excited because we are doing something that I've always wanted to do in our local waters of Hillsborough Inlet, and that is drop live lobster on the wrecks at night for these huge fish known as Kubera Snapper. But first, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we caught these, so I'll see you there. So you guys see we're gonna drop big lobster in this video, but before we do that, we gotta catch them. And we're gonna be using the lobster nets that my fiance, Brookie, makes. These are Florida lobster nets. You guys can find them at floridalobsternets.com. I'm not gonna sell you on them because for the next five minutes, you guys are gonna see us absolutely slay the lobster on these things, as well as the tickle sticks, gauges, mass strap covers, and pretty much everything else. So we'll see you guys underwater. Let's go. So what you guys are seeing us catch here are Florida spiny lobster, also known as Caribbean spiny lobster, and unlike their northeast cousins, these guys do not have claws. During the day, these guys spend their time hidden in coral heads, reefs, ledges, pretty much anything that they can hide in, because they're actually nocturnal and will roam the ocean floor at night to feed. We use this tool called a tickle stick, which is basically just this clear stick to coax them out of their house, give them a little gentle push, and then we net them with this clear net, which you guys can see they have no idea is coming. Lobster use their large antenna to feel and sense the environment around them. And although these crustaceans look slow, they have this really powerful tail that helps them propel through the water and sometimes it backfires on them and they swim right into your arms. Anytime I catch a lobster, I always like to appreciate them. They are some freaky looking animals. I mean, if you look at this thing, it looks like a giant spider underwater. They got these huge legs and then this tail this is what he propels himself with. He's got these crazy antennas to fend off predators and use it to sense things. If you guys look right there, they got these horns. If you ever get stabbed by one of those, those will mess you up. But just a really interesting looking animal. And they got these little 360 degree eyeballs as well. Can you make it talk, Victor? Oh yeah, watch this. So Brian said, can I make it talk? When they, when they move their knuckles right here, they use this and they make noise underwater and I think it's to scare off predators or just fish. I don't know if they use it for mating, for what, but pretty interesting. When you take the knuckle, he's got a little joint here. And when you hear this underwater, a lot of times it's a dead giveaway that there's a lobster underneath that rock. We're gonna go and try to turn these into some really big fish. I'm super excited. We got a target species in mind, but you never know. When you're dropping big baits like that, a big grouper could eat it, sharks. You never know. I mean, it's it, just the fact of using a lobster as bait is just, I think, pretty crazy to people because it's not something that's very common. You can only do it during lobster season, so we're going after some big ones tonight. You gotta use big bait for big fish, boy. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's a couple different wrecks we're going to try that we think these Kuberas are on. And the reason we're trying this time of year, number one, their favorite food is a lobster. And number two, you can only keep lobster during lobster season. And this time of year, June, July, August, around the full moon, they spawn. So they congregate on these deep water wrecks. And the best part about this fishing trip is if we don't catch anything, we're still going home with lobster tea and you guys get a catch and cook. And we kept the smallest ones because I'm not trying to give a Kubera free meal with a two pound lobster. Those are for us. I got two 60 Mustad treble hooks, 150 pound tough line fluorocarbon leader. I'm gonna take my zip tie right here and I'm gonna zip tie my treble hook to this lobster. At what part? part? Uh, right there, right at the knuckle. Pull it tight. Okay. So you guys see we got one big treble hook right there by his knuckle. And then we're going to do another treble hook and this treble hook is going to actually go in the lobster's tail. Just like that. And I'm not worried about the treble hooks. Most people use single hooks, but if you got really strong mustad trebs, I think you got a better shot at hooking them. We catch them on the poppers and stick baits on hooks like this, so anything to maximize our chances. First one, going down. The current's actually slightly stronger than we're able to keep up with it in gear. So we went way past it. I'm gonna drop it all the way to the bottom, reel up a little bit so we don't get hung up on it. And then by the time we're in position down there where we want to be, we'll have a nice natural drift on top of it. So we just moved in a little bit shallower because that deep wreck is almost impossible to get a good drift on. We get about 30 seconds before we blow off of it. I know they're out here. I know people have caught them. I know that they spawn around the full moons in June, July, August. So like with anything, put in the time to get the results. Well, guess what? I kept letting out anchor line, trying to get closer to the wreck until there was nothing left in my hands. And uh, so we lost our anchor. And it's unfortunate, but hopefully a lucky diver will find it and he'll have a nice length of anchor chain and a new anchor and some line. This is a very well-known wreck, so I'm not worried about it being down there. Some diver's gonna find it and put it to good use, but spirits are still high and we're gonna catch them. We just gotta keep going. We gotta keep dropping and we have no choice but to drift now. We Anchoring is clearly not an option because we, um, just lost it. We spent two nights fishing our local waters, dropping those live lobster with little to no success. Lost anchors, tons of current, bad weather, pretty much everything was working against us. I don't know about you, but as a fisherman, trying new things has to be one of the most rewarding aspects of the game for me. Regardless of the outcome, knowing you put in the effort is what keeps me going. And this story doesn't end here. My buddy Cody, who's a charter captain out of Key West, Florida, called me and asked me if I wanted to get some redemption on these fish. So we headed down to the Florida Keys, which are known to have a much larger and consistent population of these spawning Kubera snappers. We met up with the rest of our crew and the boys were headed out. All right, guys, we are on the boat on Justin's beautiful 36 Yellowfin. We got a bunch of good guys on the boat, which I'll introduce as we go on through the night. We're kind of just getting everything ready. Got the lobsters in the live well. This exact same day, September 1st, two years ago, is when we caught two 50-pound Kuberas with Cody. So the stars are aligned and in our favor to kind of replicate that again. We're due for one. This is our fourth time me and Dennis have been on a boat in the past two weeks trying to get a Kubera so we put in the time we're due for one and I uh, hope we get one first lobster going down so sometimes we zip tie them but you know what right now I'm gonna try and just hook them right here in the knuckle in that soft part 
just like that. And then we're gonna hide the treble hook right here in the tail. Oh, he doesn't like that. Two, three, four pound lead depending on the current. And we're dropping our lobster down slowly so that way it doesn't spin on the way down. So when we're doing this, we're looking for that rod tip the entire time because like John's rod just got hit and it was one big smack and if you miss it, you might be down there and your lobster's crushed. So the reason that we're targeting these fish is because they're spawning, right? So around the full moon every year, July, August, September, all these Kibera snappers gather around the, the near shore and offshore wrecks. And when that moon rises, I think that they could see better, they probably get in the mood and that's probably when they start their spawn, they get more active. So. Our rods are starting to get a little bouncy. John finally got that head and it's all right after that moon came up. No way, oh. he ate it on top, huh? Set it. Cody said he wanted to get one on the spinner. Hasn't pulled a lick of drag, huh? A lot of slack out. Not even sure if it is a snapper. It's acting weird. You mean it could be a 15 pound fish? I'm not sure what it is. Definitely a saltwater fish. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I love this guy. <laughs> Maybe this is the way they don't feel, uh, they feel comfortable with the spinner. I don't know. They don't have that big lead. We got way more of them like that. Yeah. How heavy is he, Cody? 25? 15 to 20 pounds. He did he smack it? Like, did he bite it real hard? I mean, he just picked it up. And just ran? Yeah, it's getting a little better now. I think you just had so much slack out so of his tail. Out. I think it helps that you have so much bow in your line. He's kind of already up. Yeah. When you're straight up and down, you can't pull on him as hard. Yeah, That's him, this big head He's shakes. Kicking. Man, it's been a while since I've caught a big fish on a spinner. Please. You're sweating. Man, bullets, You're bullets. sweating. So high, how high up do you think you were? Uh, 150 probably. There was slack. We are very close to the wreck because hey, I'm on it. He's gonna have to walk forward. There he is. Yeah, that's him. Look, he's that's out there. Boy. Big one. It's a real size one. Nice job, Cody. Oh gosh. Hey. Good job. Hey. It's always good to try something new, huh? Uh-huh. You just in. created a new fishery, man. On the spinning rod. That's, that's, a, that's a 30, 35 pound fish right there. I got the boker grip, let's see. What wow. up? Cody had the idea. He says, Vic, do you have a big spinner? Let's bring it down. We have our rods on the bottom. He was flatlining a lobster. So that thing is sinking down. It's probably a lot more of a natural presentation. John. And he's like, oh gosh, I just got hit. Started ripping line. Um, and yeah, got him in the boat. Look at the scale. Just to put into perspective how beast of animals these things are, massive scales on them. And just wait till you see the mouth on them. A mouth capable of crushing a lobster in half. We got the new Kaiju by Mustad 7.0. Never tried these hooks before, but that was the first bite. And it was right here when we brought him the boat and we got a nice nino on the other side, so. Yeah. Okay, so guys, picture this. This is how badass this animal is. How many fish do you know are out there eating a lobster? A whole lobster. A lot of people think we're crazy for using them as bait, but this is a once in a lifetime kind of fishery. It truly is a special fish. My favorite fish in the entire world. You guys know I brag about them all the time. Just the fact that they're so smart, um, they're hard to fool, the bait, everything about these fish is just off of the chain. Um, they got these huge fangs and they're just a badass animal and they taste amazing. We're actually gonna harvest this guy. You can keep two in the state of Florida over 30 inches and then I think you can keep a couple more under 30 inches but we're gonna definitely harvest this guy. We don't wanna be greedy. Um, a lot of people would release one this size and wait for a bigger one but this is plenty big enough to eat. I'm looking forward to see what you do with them in the kitchen. Yes. You gotta come by. You're gonna be in town. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to come up. All right, guys, we're gonna get a weight on this bad boy. What's it say? Subtle. 
34, 7, 35 pounds. 35 pounds on the spinning reel. Uh, this guy's going in the cooler. I'm going to bleed him, but look at that. Look at those fangs, man. The cool thing about these fish, not only do they taste great, but I actually got a couple Kubera jaws, Kubera jaws hanging in the living room. When you boil these heads, you're actually able to retain the jaw, and they make such a cool house decor for any fisherman and a great story to tell. That's a good sized fish, man. So this is what Cody caught it on, right? This is my Saltiga. I got the popping rod like we'd fish for tuna, but I'm gonna start by casting it up current so that way by the time it's down, it'll okay, be closer done. to the wreck. So look at this, guys. I knew I felt like I got a bite, but I wasn't sure if it was the lobster. Because these guys are pretty uh, aggressive in the water and when they propel back, you can really feel it in your line. But look at that. One probably short striked it, just missed a treble hook, and ate half its tail. There's really, when you're Kubera fishing, there's really no bycatch. The only other thing you're going to hook with the lobster are sharks, nurse sharks, and goliath grouper. But a goliath would have no problem sucking this whole thing in. So this was definitely a telltale sign of a Kubera snapper. Crushed. Still moving? He's still moving. Yeah, he's moving. Victor, if you want to hand me that rod, <laughs> you get on that. Oh, no, no, he can, oh, he can fight it. Somebody get over here? Victor! You, can, you guys can get Victor, it. Victor, go! It's your turn, go! Nope. Right, Russ, is yours. Is he on there? Yeah, he's That's on there. Get him, Russ. Don't stop, Russ. I'm going to get one on my chosen way. You absolutely are going to get one. Back it off a little bit. Would this be our first Kubera Ross? Still gaining, right? First decent one. Really? Yeah. I kept little ones on the rocks in the back. Yeah. I dove this wreck and it had two little thousand of them. I didn't know what they were. Seaver told me. They were all like this big. I thought they were mega flowers, but they were all white. Alright guys, second Kubera on of the night. I think we've had four official bites. Cody's fish. John got a bite. I got a bite. Oh, you're already that close? Oh, damn, the shark ate him. No. Yeah, this one's fried, actually. Number two. Oh, yeah, get that. Grab that phone. All right, guys, Kubera number two. The bite is definitely the turning up. The land, Victor. I told you. The but keys. Fine. Unfortunately, a shark got to this guy, so it would be, yeah, it'd be kind of selfish of us to throw him back and look for another fresh one. So that's going to be probably our limit right there. But he got that back treble hook, probably went for that lobster's tail. Yeah, so this, this fish definitely had someone else's lobster in the recent days. Because you see how this lobster's kind of really red. It's kind of digested, so that's not one of ours. Ours are fresh, so somebody missed him once, but uh, those trouble hooks didn't miss him this time. So we had, he has a canine mark on the side of his mantle there, or his carapace rather. So, second time, exact same thing happened. You can see Kubera came up, crushed the tail, and just kind of, I don't know, I think they feel the resistance, they feel the hook, they don't like it, and they let go, and they don't really come back. Well, I don't think he was too small to eat the bait, but a lot of slack out, so can't hook them all. He yep. got that one though. That's a that's a good bite there. A couple a couple bites too. Get a load of this Kubera snapper's mouth. Every single one is a little bit different in terms of their jaws. Some of them have crazy canines. I mean, this looks like a wolf underwater. Um, I can't even imagine just what that lobster, what was going through his head. He sees this monster Kubera snapper come by with these fangs. And it's just like, whenever I, I see or, or experience a fishery like that where using a whole lobster as bait makes you kind of see how resilient and how hardy and aggressive fish are. Um, we always try to you know maintain best practices when we fish, but when you think about how badass and just crazy mental nature is, this fish, is so strong he can crush a lobster when we're out diving we use gloves and all this protective gear because we're worried about getting cut up and bleeding he literally eats it for breakfast lunch and dinner which i just find so cool so 
We got the 35 pound Kubera in Pompano, been on ice for two days. Took really good care of it. And I'm gonna fillet it up with the seven inch Dextream dual edge knife. And you guys will see on the back of the blade right here, I have a tiger edge, which is gonna be perfect for going through these really thick scales. Look at that. See that? Slice right through it. If there's ever a time where this knife is applicable, it is right now. These guys have some monster scales. So we're gonna go right here, all the way around to the head, swivel around, and I'll tell you what, a fish like this, his scales will do a number on your knife's blade and sharpness. So I'm happy I have it right here. And look at this giant tail. So every fish gets its strength and power from its tail. The bigger, the broader it is, something like a swordfish or any pelagic fish. This is what drives and propels the fish through the water. You can see out of all the snapper species, these guys are just built for brute strength and power. Now I'm gonna flip the blade over and get my knife on the, this side, the precision side, get it on the Kubera snapper spine and just start to free up this meat. Now, definitely take multiple passes because this fish is just so dang big. And I can already tell you, I watched, um, I watched my video from a few years ago when we did this with Cody and my buddy Yames, who's a chef, he actually cooked the dinner of this fish of the Kubera snapper for us. And I remember out of all the snapper species, it was just super fatty and just delicious. So I'm going to lift up right here, get over the rib cage and try to break through the pin bones. Just like that. I really don't want to fold the meat over because you don't want to tear. Okay, now I'm over the rib cage. You see how I'm lifting it with my hand? I'm not tearing it like this because that's going to ruin your meat. You're not going to get a nice fillet. I'm just gently lifting it up on top of the backbone right here, separating. You know what? Watch this. Here's a little trick. I can grab onto the skin of this fish and kind of use it as a little lever to hold so that way I don't tear the meat. Down on the other side of that backbone. Monster ribs on this guy. And just like that. Now that is a slab of meat. Look at that. And I did bleed this guy on the boat. I didn't show you guys on video, or I might have, in the fish box. But you can see that I don't have a bunch of blood running on my flay table, and that's because we bled this fish. And I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty guilty of not bleeding my fish from time to time. But when you do take the time to bleed them, you get a much better product. I don't have blood running around the flay table. It's just a really good looking piece of fish when you take the time to take care of it. Huge scales, guys. Look at this. That's a 35 pound fish. A tarpon would probably have to be 100 pounds to have a scale that big. So now that I got it into a more manageable piece, I'm going to line it up with the edge of the flay table. And I did switch knives. This is an 8 inch soft grip flexible fillet. And I'm just pushing away from me, left hand trailing so I can feel at all times. And look at that. See the bloodline is right here. You don't want that in your final product anywhere. This is real thick and that's going to be kind of gamey as well. That is a nice piece of fish. You can tell this fish, it's an old fish. It's got some fat to it. It's gonna have flavor. It's not gonna be a dry fish. Remember every single time I've ever had Kubera, it is mouthwatering. A lot of people, even some of the guys on the boat were saying how like, oh, that's not a good eater size. You know, we want the small ones, but I don't know. This is one of those fish where it's, I think the bigger, the better. So I got two beautiful bags of Kubera fillets. And I save the head because you guys are going to freak out when you see the cool house decor you can make with a bad boy like this. Take a look at these beautiful Kubera snapper fillets. 
they just scream, eat me. They're just mouth watering. They got these huge flakes and we're gonna keep it real simple and just let the fish shine. I'm gonna do a pasta dish tonight, but we're gonna pan sear the Kibera snapper outside on the Camp Chef. And so we're gonna go generous amount of salt. It's a big piece of fish, so I'm not afraid to season this thing and really assault it with a lot of salt. Same thing goes with the pepper. And you know Vic's gotta do garlic powder. And before I season this fish, I patted it really well and dry because when you pan sear, I want a good crust on there. And if there's any moisture, it's gonna make your life really difficult. So now we're gonna flip and do the exact same thing on the other side. So this is gonna be like a little finishing sauce kind of relish type thing for our fish. Inside I got some roasted red peppers, parsley, Calabrian chili, garlic, lemon juice, um, salt, and I blended half of it and then I left half of it chunky. So it's kind of be, I don't really want to say salsa, but it's just going to be a nice little pairing to go with our fish and pasta. And then if you guys come over here, I sauteed some zucchini, some corn, onions, garlic, blended it together, added some ricotta cheese and Parmesan cheese into there, um, some lemon juice, garlic, and just made like a really fresh, kind of like a vegetable-based pasta sauce. We're gonna boil some bow ties in here in a little bit later. But to go with our pasta, I want that pasta to have a little crunch, and I want to incorporate the vegetables two ways, with the sauce, and then also, we're gonna saute some zucchini and corn and onions so you get a little bite to it too. Okay, so into the saute pan, some avocado oil. We're gonna saute some minced onions. Now we're gonna go in with some diced zucchini. Onions are caramelized and sauteed. So now we're gonna go in with some garlic. Zucchini is soft, but still firm, and that's what I want. I want everyone to have a, a crunch to it. You know, I don't want it to be mushy. I'm gonna go in with some bow tie pasta. All right. Kubera grill time. Let's fire up the sidekick. So here's my plan for the fish. We got the sidekick and I got the lumberjack skillet, which is the biggest skillet Camp Chef makes. And it's always hard for me to cook fish for so many people at once, but this thing is gonna come in really handy. So I got the pan piping hot. We're gonna go in with some avocado oil. You guys see that thing is smoking. Okay, so this is gonna drop pretty drastically in temperature when I set all these fish in, but I'm gonna go straight down and kind of press them because we want to get that real good brown crust on there. You don't want any pockets to form. And I'm gonna go on the outside edges of the pan. So you see that little brown crust form and that's what we want, but it's not quite there yet. And this works really well with a big thick piece of fish because you could get a good crust on one side. And then we're gonna put it in the pellet side or in the pellet grill and then it'll just continue to get indirect heat and cook throughout so it doesn't dry out on one side. We got raw corn right off the husk. Gonna go in with our zucchini. Probably not gonna use all of this, but put this in at the very end. You don't need to cook it. You can 100% eat corn raw and it's nice and crunchy. The vibrant gives your pasta a good pop. And then we're gonna go ahead with our pasta sauce as well. This is what the pasta looks like after mixed it with the sauce, the zucchini, the corn. It's just so many flavors and things going on. You got the ricotta, parmesan, corn. All right, we're gonna go in with some butter, lemon, and I'm gonna kill the heat on this guy. Well, I'm not gonna lie. Went inside a little too long. My heat was a little too high, so got a little bit crispier than I thought they would. It's all right. Literally for just made some, seconds. Yeah, that's it. We'll be fine. So we're gonna flip them over. We'll be fine. We got this grill set to 400 and they're just gonna finish in here in that indirect heat. So it's been in for like four minutes and when you have that thick piece of fish you don't it's really hard to cook it all the way through in a pan you want an indirect heat like an oven or a pellet grill so that way it's slowly cooking 
toss the knob of butter in there, lemon juice, we'll be able to baste it later. And um, it's just a really good way to cook fish. And I hate stinking up the house, and that's why I absolutely love this thing and cooking on it. It is a fisherman's best friend. She's done. She's done. So listen, I'm gonna keep it real. I mess up sometimes. It's just a little bit of char, it's flavor, but you guys get the general concept. You want a pan sear, you want one side to be crispy, you put it in the, uh, in the pellet grill, and then you're gonna see this is gonna be a juicy, flaky, just amazing fish. So we got our creamy zucchini and corn sauce pasta. I mean, look at this. You see how much this fish flakes and just jiggles? You know that's a sign of a good fish. It's gonna be super tender and just delicious. A lot of people are so afraid of eating big fish because they think it's gonna be tough, but Kubera Snapper, like I told you earlier, it is not like that at all. I think the bigger the better, the more fat the fish has, the more flavor it has. And then I want everyone to get a little bite of that Calabrian chili and roasted red pepper sauce that I made. I'm just gonna drizzle it right over our fist, just like that. A little bit spicy, acidic, and uh, just lots of flavor. There you go, Captain Cody, the man who made this all possible. This looks delectable. You know, I've fished with this guy for, I don't know, the past seven years, and he's put me in a lot of fish, but it's nice to finally be able to pay it back or pay it forward and cook him something, you know? We've talked about this, he's like, Vic, when are you gonna invite me? But between him living in Del Rey and the Keys and our schedules lining up, he's finally at the dinner table. I thought this was a one-sided relation for a while, but it's about time. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. <laughs> Thank you, Victor, for dinner. Mm, you're welcome. Oh, it's fire. It's so good. I think it's got one of the best flakes, best fat content of any snapper. I like it a lot. I like it better than mom's snapper, honestly. Really? Yeah. That's saying a lot. It's good. That is really good. It's not chewy at all. That is really good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Pretty flaky. And you've eaten a lot of fish in your day. Mm-hmm. All the bigger fish can be chewy sometimes. I think the grouper, grouper, big grouper can be really chewy, but this, not at all. Yeah, it's good. The 50 pounder, honestly, was just as tender as this. Really? Yeah, we've eaten two 50 pounders. One in Mexico and then one from, with Cody, like two years ago. It's good. Reminds me of, honestly, barrel fish. Barrel fish? Oh, you mean the barrel fish that we're gonna film together? <laughs> <laughs> one day. Victor was worried about the sear and he came running inside. He's like, I burnt my fish. But it's like the perfect sear. It doesn't taste burnt, it's really delicious. The fish is cooked to perfection. I haven't even tried the pasta yet, but earlier when he made the sauce, I tried it and it was really good. So I think it's great. Good job. Thank you, babe. Great job, Victor. It's delicious. Phenomenal. And broke too. I got a little book out of the picture. I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, the fish is super flaky. It's really tender. It's not like dry or anything, so you don't have to worry about it being burnt. And it's, it's just really good. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. As you guys know, I am obsessed with these fish. I love Kubera. If I ever have the chance to fish for them, I drop everything I'm doing just like I did this past Friday. Cody called me at 11 a.m. He goes, you want to go to the Keys? I said, heck yeah. Called Dennis, made sure he was available, drove down there, sat in traffic for six and a half hours, fished all night, and then drove back the next morning. That's how much we love these fish. That's how much I respect these fish. And I wanted to make a nice meal for my friends, for Cody, since he says our relationship is one-sided, no more. Sometimes. I'll be cooking for him more often, but seriously, thank you guys so much, and none of it is possible without the captains that a lot of times you guys see us fish with. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.